Number 13, the larger leg of a right triangle is 3 centimeters longer than its smaller leg. The hypotenuse is 6 centimeters longer than the smaller leg. How many centimeters long is the smaller leg? As I'm reading this question, I notice that everything is, re is in relation to that smaller leg. We're comparing the large leg to it and the hypotenuse to it. And if you recall, the hypotenuse is the longest side of a of a right triangle. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and draw a picture. I know it's a right triangle and I know that there's a large leg and a smaller leg so I know it's not isosceles and the smaller leg I'm going to call X because it's that's what we don't know and that's what it is referencing on both of those comparisons. So that's going to be our X and then the larger leg that would be over here is three longer than the smaller so that would be x plus three the hypotenuse is six longer so that would be x plus six and now they want to know the actual measurement of that smaller leg well I have a bunch of unknowns and I don't know what the whole thing equals so I need to use what my clue here that it's a right triangle and I'm gonna go ahead and set up the Pythagorean theorem. So if we do a squared plus b squared equals c squared um, and plug in, so my a is going to be the x, so that's x squared plus, and then right here I have for my b it is x plus 3, so that would be x plus 3 squared equals my c squared which is the x plus 6 squared. So I'm going to use, you can use FOIL, but I'm going to use the box method. That's how I teach it. And the box method just means we're going to take that x plus 3 and we're going to make a box and multiply everything out. So everything from the x plus 3 times everything from the x plus 3. So x times x gives us x squared, 3 times x gives us 3x, x times 3 gives us 3x, and 3 times 3 gives us 9. Next up, I'm going to add up my like terms. So 3x plus 3x gives us 6x. So I'm going to bring down my x squared here and write out what I have from this box. So I have x squared plus 6x plus 9 and now I need to figure out um, the x plus 6 squared so I'm going to multiply x plus 6 times x plus 6 and I get x times x gives me x squared 6 times x gives me 6x and then the top right box is x times 6 which is 6x and finally 6 times 6 which is 36 I'm going to do the same thing, I'm going to add up my like terms, the 6x and the 6x, and I'm going to be left with x squared plus 12x plus 36. And I ran out of room there, so I'm going to rewrite that a little more neatly, and I'm going to try to get everything on one side of that equation. Alright, so let's go ahead and combine our like terms first before we move stuff over to one side to solve it for zero. So x squared plus x squared is going to give us 2x squared plus 6x plus 9 and the other side it looks like is already simplified so there are no like terms on the other side. Um, since I can take x squared from 2x squared I'm going to go ahead and move the x squared to the left so I'm going to do minus x squared to both sides and I'm going to do a couple things in one step so I have a positive 12x I want to move that to the left side so I'll do minus 12x and I also see the 36 I want to get rid of so I'll do minus 36 minus 36 and we can go ahead and start canceling here on the right side x squared minus x squared is 0, that's why I did it. 12x minus 12x is 0, 
and 36 minus 36 is 0. So now we just need to simplify this. So 2x squared minus, that's really a 1x squared, is just 1x squared. 6x minus 12x gives us a negative 6x, and 9 minus 36 is negative 27, and that equals 0. We're almost there. Now we need to factor it down to find out our possible solutions for x. And then we're going to plug them into our smaller leg. And if you recall, the smaller leg we called as x earlier. So actually, once we solve for x, we have found our solution. So I'm going to multiply to factor this quadratic. I'm going to multiply the outside numbers. And that's really a 1 for my coefficient. So 1 times negative 27 is negative 27. And now I'm thinking, what can I multiply to get negative 27 but add to get that middle term of negative 6? So my factors of 27, I'm thinking of 3 and 9, and I need to go no further because 3 and 9 are 6 apart. So that tells me I've chosen correctly. And since that's a negative 27, that means one of my numbers, either the 3 or the 9, needs to be negative because a positive times a negative gives me a negative. And the reason I know it's the 9 is because the larger number, um, the, the middle term is negative, so, so the larger number needs to be negative. So that would be negative 9 and 3. So negative 9 times 3 gives me the negative 27. Negative 9 plus 3 gives me the negative 6. So I know it worked. And I'm going to put both of those over my lead coefficient. And that was my lead coefficient, that 1. It just goes on the bottom. And that tells me when I write my two factors, that tells me what they're going to be. So that would be 1x, in other words. And that 1x is going to go right here. And then that's a negative 9. That negative 9 is going to go right there. And then remember, this was a 1x, so that goes right here. And then that's a positive 3, so that goes right here. So it's really x minus 9 and x plus 3 equal to 0. And now all I need to do is set them equal to 0 and solve for x. And it'll just be a one-step equation. So here we go. x minus 9 equals 0. I just add 9 to both sides. And I get x equals 9. And then minus 3 and minus 3, I'm going to get x equals negative 3. So look at my two solutions. Remember on our picture, we did call that smaller leg, which is what we're looking for, x. So can x be a negative number is what you need to ask yourself. And in this case, no, because if x was negative 3, that would mean this side right here is a negative value. We know that's not true. Um, the smallest anything can be is 0. Um, you can't have less than 0 for a distance. So not going to work negative 3. 9 is our only solution. Now be careful. If it would have said the hypotenuse, then we know that that was x plus 6. That answer would have been 9 plus 6, 15. And be careful because this was x plus 3. If they would ask for the larger leg, that would have been 9 plus 3, 12. So make sure you're reading what the question's asking. In this case, though, it just wants to know the smaller leg. So our answer is 9. All right. Great job. Thanks for watching. Number 14. Katie and Jennifer are playing a game. Katie and Jennifer each started with 100. So that tells me... At the end of each turn, Katie's points doubled, and Jennifer's increased by 200. At the start of which turn will Katie have uh, first have more points than Jennifer? All right, this is a little bit of a play on words, because if you look here, it says at the end of each turn, and then our question wants to know at the start of which turn. So, reading this critically... When we make our table up, we want to make sure that we are um, putting it in the same terminology as our question, which would mean at the start of each turn. So when I make my table, it's all going to be start. 
All right, so my table looks like this. The start of the first turn, second, third, and fourth. And I have Katie and Jennifer's points. That's going to represent my columns. So they each started with 100. So the start of the first turn, they both had 100. And Katie's are doubling, so I'm just going to keep doubling those. So 200, and then 400, and then if we double 400, we get 800. And now Jennifer's are always increasing by 200. So 100 plus 200 is 300. 300 plus 200 is 500. And 500 plus 200 is 700. So the question is asking, when will Katie first have more? So Katie starts behind on that first round. Uh, I'm sorry, on the second round, she's behind. They're tied at the first round. So it's not there, it's not there. Katie's still behind. She has 400, Jennifer has 500. But at the start of the fourth round, she is going to pass her up. So... Katie's going to be there at the fourth round. Now, again, the confusing part is they said end of the turn and start of the turn. So I recommend that you go with what the question's asking. And the question says start. So just make your table up using the starting points as being 100. Okay? And I almost forgot to give Katie a shout-out. Hooray, Katie!